Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Question Time with myself, Harry Knight. Once again, I'm going to be going through the comments that you guys have left for us on various social media posts and doing my best to answer your questions. Our first comment this week comes from Alvaro Loesas Esteban. Alvaro, I hope I got your name correct. Uh, Alvaro was asking about what the correct body position is to lie on the board for paddling. And uh, this is a, you know, a really interesting question. The, the, the really quick, simple answer is that you want the board to sit nice and flat on the water. If we have the weight too far back, the tail's gonna stick down. And as that board moves through the water, it's gonna be pushing water ahead of it. It's gonna be running very slow. Okay, now the alternative is we're too far forward, the nose is gonna dig down and the board's gonna be very prone to nose diving, you know, particularly as we're paddling and trying to catch waves. So we don't want either of those two things. Now, in order to find the correct position, um, what we need to do is if we have our, our surfboard here, okay, and uh, we have our surfer, this is where it's gonna really challenge my artistic skills here. Hopefully this makes sense as a, a person lying on the board paddling. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the center of our uh, weight right over the top of the center of buoyancy, okay? Now, the tricky part here is that it's gonna be very different for every person and every board, okay? The center of the weight is going to be very dependent on on you know how we how we're shaped you know some people carry a little bit more weight in the shoulders some people carry a little more weight in their hips uh, it's going to move that center of weight up and down the body a little bit um, for the center of buoyancy what we're looking for is kind of the the center of the volume um, on the board you know we, we spoke about last week how the board's providing most of the, the buoyant force for this Thing. So, uh, you know, as, as that moves forwards and backwards on the board, so the, um, so the buoyancy is going to move backwards and forwards. Now, a good starting point, center of volume for most boards is going to be somewhere around the middle of the surfboard, okay? And the center of mass for most human beings is going to be somewhere around the middle. So if you can get middle of human body is, is about your belly button, okay? So if you can get your belly button about in the center of the surfboard, Okay, you can actually try if you just pick the board up and hold it by the rails and find the point where it's you know more or less balanced, that'll be a good place to, to kind of get your belly button. Now, again, as I said before, we're all slightly different shapes and sizes, so you may find you need to move an inch forward or an inch back. What we're really looking for is the point where you're lying on the kind of pivot point for the board, and so by maybe arching your back, pressing your knees into the board, we can actually lift the nose of the board very slightly uh, in, into an upwards angle. And by flattening the chest down to the deck of the board, um, and maybe kicking our heels up towards our bum, we could actually get the nose to dip downwards. Okay, and you'll be surprised, even on quite a big board, you know, even on an eight or a nine foot board, if you're more than a, an inch or so out of position, you'll find that you can only do one of those. You might be able to lift the nose, and you might be able to lower it relatively, but you won't actually be able to get it to go nose downwards, okay? You might be able to get it to go nose downwards, but if you're too far forward, you won't actually be able to get it to go fully nose up. And we want to be able to do both. There are occasions in surfing where we want to kind of lift that nose, you know, maybe it catches in some chop and we want to try and pull it back up again. Maybe as we're paddling into a wave, we want to try and get that nose, push it down the hill. So we want to be on that pivot point. Now, what I would really recommend is if you can get the board on the water, uh, you know, flat water somewhere, maybe a, a swimming pool or a tide pool somewhere, uh, a lake where the water's nice and flat, you're not going to be being hit and rolled around by waves. And try just, you know, sliding backwards, sliding forwards and, and try, you know, arching your back and collapsing, you know, pressing your chest down into the board and see if you can find that point where you can really pivot backwards and forwards. And that that's your, we, we call it the sweet spot on the board sometimes, okay? That, that, you're in position now. So now find a way to mark it. Uh, you know, maybe you put a line in the wax somewhere, maybe you just take note of where the, the logos are on the board or, you know, how far away the nose is, but find a way so that you can, you can find that position again and again and again. Now the really interesting thing is, once you get a feel for being on the sweet spot, for having that control of the board, um, 
you will be able to adapt to almost any surfboard. Um, they actually did an experiment on this um, at uh, California State University. They were doing some uh, experiments on, on paddling surfboards and they, they had uh, Firewire shape them three boards that were basically identical. They're all Firewire dominators. Uh, but what they did, the, the, the foil of the board, which is, is how the thickness of the board changes from nose to tail. This is a very funny shaped sort of surfboard, but how the thickness changes um, from nose to tail. And what they did was they moved the, the thickest part of the board, they moved it uh, forwards and backwards by about an inch, two and a half centimeters. Um, and what they found was it made no difference to people's paddling. Moving the, the thickest, most vol voluminous part of the board up to the front of the board or to the back of the board didn't make any difference because what happened was all the surfers got on the board and adjusted their body position to counterbalance it and to make the board feel correct for them. Um, so yeah, once you've figured this out, once you know how to, uh, how to get comfortable on the board and, and to, to find that sweet spot, you can jump on a long board, a short board, different shapes, and you will, you will adapt to it very, very quickly. But it's worth training your brain because we've all seen that person, you know, trying to paddle out and the, you know, nose is sticking up in the air like this because that's what feels correct to them in that moment. Um, so yeah, learn to, uh, learn to find that correct position. All right. Okay, so the next question comes from Lindsay Owens, who was asking about the different materials that fins are made of and how you choose the correct one. Okay, now this is a great question. It's something that people are always very confused about. And there's, there's so much variation and uh, sort of techie trade names that, that, that companies have for their different materials. So it's quite hard to compare them. So, um, just to put a few things in reference, you know, when we're, when we're looking at fin material, what we're really looking at is the, the, different, uh, the, the different ways that material flexes. That's the most important thing, okay? If you have a material that flexes quite a lot, it acts a little bit like suspension. You know, as you uh, are maneuvering the board, you're going from one rail onto the other. As you flick the board from one rail to the other and the pressure against the fin changes, the fin can bend and flex. It will do and it will just absorb some of that movement and then gently kind of spring back into shape. And so you get this slightly delayed, slightly dampened feel through the fins, okay? Which in certain occasions can be really, really helpful. It can be exactly what you want. And when you have a really stiff fin, um, that motion, you know, all the, the, the change in the water as you roll from one rail to rail, that's transmitted directly through the water into the board um, via the fin. So. Um, that's what we're playing around with with materials. Now, Lindsay's question very specifically, let me get my chart out here. Uh, Lindsay's question very specifically was about level two and level three surfing. Now, for those of you guys that don't know about our, our sort of level system, um, level two is where we're first paddling out and catching unbroken waves, uh, mostly sort of surfing straight towards the beach. And then towards the second half of level two, starting to think about angling our takeoffs and surfing uh, you know, trimming across the wave. Uh, into level three, uh, we're starting to think about uh, performing cutbacks and uh, re-entries um, and floaters, uh, which you can uh, see a little bit more. Rue uh, was talking about linking those two maneuvers together um, and, and surfing to the targets, which is kind of the end of, of level three moving into level four. So with reference to that, my, the first piece of advice I have is if, if we're looking at level one and level two, just don't worry about the fins too much. As long as there is a fin in the board, it will do its job absolutely fine. I've got actually a couple of fins here. These are the, the sort of um, plastic, thermoplastic fins that normally you'll find, um, you know, kind of come with the board quite often. You get these almost for free a, a lot of time thrown in, or they'll certainly be the very cheapest option that you can find on websites. And for the most part, this thermoplastic material now is quite good. It didn't used to be. Going back, you know, 20 years or so, these plastics were very, very soft and they really did flex a lot. And, and you know, there, there could be problems as you started to push into kind of later level two, starting to angle the board and go across the wave. The fins were so flexible that they could kind of not be, not be so ideal. Um, modern thermoplastic fins, they're, they're great. Um, as you move into level three and level four, you could start thinking about, you know, changing fins. Uh, what I normally say is the point where you can start to link multiple carving turns on one wave 
is the point when you'll start to notice, you know, little differences, whether it's fins or tail shapes or rockers on the board, you know, that's the moment when you'll start to notice those differences if you can compare apples for apples. And, and fins is a great one, you know, because you can ride exactly the same board, swap the fins out and put different ones in. Um, what I would say for most people, you know, in this level two, level three range is if you were going to go for something slightly more than the, the, the sort of basic thermoplastics, um, both Futures and FCS um, have uh, these, the FCS calls it Neo Glass and Futures calls it Alpha. And it's sort of the next step up in what you're paying for. And it's still, you know, it's got a reasonable little bit of flex. It's not as stiff as some of the other fins. Um, but it's, it, you know, these are very, very well-made fins. They're very, very accurately molded. Um, they're relatively cheap and they will work absolutely fine. Um, if you want to play around, you know, there's fiberglass and carbon fiber and um, all sorts of different materials that get used. And, and it's all with the aim of controlling flex patterns. Um, but until we're up here in level four and we're really thinking about, you know, aggressive vertical top to bottom surfing, I honestly wouldn't worry about the fin construction too much because the, the difference is going to be so subtle, it's very unlikely that you're, you're really going to notice. And you will see uh, pro surfers surfing these, these Neoglass and these Alpha uh, technologies. You'll see World Championship Tour surfers riding this technology. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for anybody that's surfing anywhere on this chart. Um, you, don't, you don't need to spend huge amounts of money on fins. Cool. Well, I hope that was interesting. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on anything, throw them in down below. Um, I will do my best to, uh, to answer them for you. And uh, until next week, take care and goodbye.